Okay, guys. Welcome to Auto Amateur Live. This is the first live I've done probably in about a year, um, and we've already run into technical problems. So uh, if you joined into the first streaming, <laughs> I apologize for just sitting around waiting for me to join, but I'm here now, and uh, hopefully you can see me. Let's get the chat up. Uh, so we've got, who have we got? We've got Mr. Michael Wooten, uh, TikTok, <laughs> thank you, Drew. Uh, Trond, hello from Norway, how are you doing? Alfredo, awesome, you guys can see me, that's fantastic. Um, well, welcome, also Amateur Live is back. I've got to say, I've been off the radar a little bit recently, um, and it's just because summer's been busy and having three kids is busy and my work has been nuts at the moment. Um, but you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying desperately to finish the edit on three different videos that I've had started um, for weeks. Like since we went to um, the Rocky Mountains uh, several months ago now, I've been in England for a month. Um, I've done suspension work, I've done body work, I've done interior work, and I've got sort of three videos in parallel that I'm editing and I haven't finished any of them. Um, so I'm gonna hopefully get those out. But considering the announcement this week of the GT3 RS, the 992, I just had to start talking about it. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to start recording uh, this week's podcast with Andy. Um, if you guys follow um, Curb and Canyon, then, uh, Hopefully, uh, you'll know that we get excited about stuff like this and we talk about it. And indeed, um, we are going to be talking about the, uh, the RS. But I wanted to go live and just, you know, start getting on it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Hello, Adam from Cape Town. Um, Trond, what have you been doing? You've been working on your 997.1. Coilovers. Oh, very nice. Very good. I have to say, and we're going to talk about this a little bit today, the... Uh, the 997.1, I think, has become my favorite all-time Porsche 911. Controversial, maybe, uh, but it, it, I think I think it's the truth. You know, got to be honest. Uh, so we're here today to talk about the GT3 RS, which was uh, launched this week. It's live on the configurator, and I've got to say, I'm excited. Not because I'm ever gonna be able to afford one of these cars, um, but just because of what a big deal they are. So for anyone that doesn't know, let's go back to the beginning. This is the 50th year of the RS models. And in 1972, the car on the right-hand side there was a 2.7 liter, 2.7 flat six, that was introduced by Porsche with the ducktail, with the spoiler for the first time, I had about 200 horses and it was a really big deal in that it was like a street legal sports car, which was also designed to be a race car, which had spoiler on the back, which was lighter. Um, they tried to strip some weight out of it um, to really make it a, a car that you would, you know, you'd want to drive, drive on a track. And so that's the birth of not only the RS generations of 911, uh, but it's also the birth of the ducktail. And I think that's pretty cool. And actually, if you look, and we will do in a second, through the different generations of the GC3 RS, most people think about the GC3 RS in terms of the huge wing on the back. They've tried in a lot of the generations to maintain that ducktail underneath the wing. So you almost get two wings in one. We'll take a look at that in a second. Um, but, you know, since 1972, we've had a number of different RSs. Um, for 911s throughout the, you know, the different generations. It wasn't until the 996 came along, and uh, let's just get rid of my pretty face here for a second. It wasn't until the, uh, the 996 came along, when the second generation of the 996, that we got the first ever uh, 911 GT3 RS. It came out, it had 3.8 liter engine, um, it had about 375 horses, and it could do zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Now, by today's standards, that's pretty slow, and it's not a huge amount of power. At the time, when you're considering the, uh, the base Carrera was putting out about 320 horses, the second generation 996, um, that's pretty fancy. Uh, the fact that it came out with this mega 
runway kind of wing, I think that is pretty special as well. And, you know, if we jump forward to today, um, we're seeing like a whole number of other different changes to the car. Um, the first GT3 RS was quite bold in that they put this big wing on the back, um, but they also decided to give you the option for wheels with color and those big um, letters down the side to let everybody know that you're there, you know, you mean business. That's a GT3 RS. You've got red wheels and you've got a big wing on the back. You know, all right, very good fancy. Um, so that was the 996 generation. The 997 generation came out and this, again, I think I said this earlier in the, in the, uh, the, the, the live, this is, this is my favorite. I think this is my all time favorite 911. Um, partly because I've owned one. Um, but the more time I spend with 911s and all the different models, um, the more I come back to looking at this one and just thinking it's perfect. The, the tail light at the back, the lights at the front, the way they've handled the, uh, the eyebrow lights on the, on the front bumper, um, the interior is beautiful. And, and actually the GT3 RS, which a lot of people are looking at the new one and sort of turning their nose up a little bit, actually, we'll talk about that in a second. It's, it's had an extremely positive reaction from a lot of Porsche enthusiasts. It's also been given sort of the thumbs down by quite a few. And we know that Mr. Nick Murray, or at least I know Mr. Nick Murray is one of those. Um, the, uh, let's see, what, were the, what was the power capability of this puppy? Um, the GT3 RS, or the, uh, when it came out for the 997.1, 3.6 litre, um, I think, I think that might be wrong. That, that has to be wrong. <laughs> but let's just say I'm right. 3.6 litre engine, 415 horses and 4.2 seconds. So you got an extra um, amount of horsepower in the engine um, and you got to shave 0.2 per second or, you know, whatever, um, off the zero to 60. That's pretty cool. Uh, but you just look at it. it. It just looks 100 years fresher, newer, cooler than the first one. Um, and then the second generation 997 came out. Now, this one, I think there were only about 500 of these sold in the US. So if you have a second generation 997 GT3 or a GT3 RS, you've got a unicorn and you need to keep hold of it, or at least I would advise strongly to drive the crap out of it and keep hold of it. Um, only 500 produced. And actually, you think back to um, the, the RS that was produced originally, um, there were only 1,500 of those produced worldwide. Um, 1,500. And I, I wonder how many of those have been sort of rusted out I wonder how many of those have been driven off the road. You know, I wonder how many are still in existence. Um, probably quite a few, but uh, the the 997.2, uh, like I say, just 500. Um, and that one got a little modest um, boost in the horsepower um, and the engine, 3.8, 450, 445 horses and four seconds. Um, so it shaves another little bit of time off the zero to 60. Now, I think for a car that's about 10 years old, um, uh, 10 years old, 12 years old now, I guess, came out in one, well, 2010. Yeah. Okay. About 12 years old. Um, 450 is still a nice, healthy amount of horsepower, zero to 60 in four seconds. I mean, it's still a fast car. It's still considered to be a very fast car. Um, and it still looks modern. It still looks great. It's got that big wing on the back, which was a step up from the 997.1. And the 997.1 was very similar to the 996.2's wing, um, but there we go. And then, of course, the 991.1, let me uh, just get the uh, titles out of the way there. Um, to me, if the, if the orange color for the 997.1 was the launch color and the, and the color that's sort of synonymous with that model of 911, um, the, the lava orange, 991.1 GT3 RS is the one that sticks in my mind. Whenever I think about the GT3 RS, I think about the lava orange and it looks gorgeous. I, you know, it, it's got the big wing on the back again. Um, this one had um, a four liter engine. I've actually driven one of these. Um, a friend of mine, AJ, had one in white. Um, he had the really uncomfortable bucket seats, uh, but I had a good drive. The big, um, 
The big thing about this one, uh, which caused a massive uproar, was that Porsche only released it in the PDK. They did not release it in the manual. So the 996 GT3 RS, the 997 GT3 RS, the first and second gen, they just came in the manual. Naturally aspirated flat six engines, but they're only available in manual. For the first time ever, they're now available in automatic and automatic only. Now Porsche were trying to move over to the PDK um, exclusively across all of their cars. Um, you know, it is quite a big thing to move away from the manual gear shifter when you're thinking um, from the perspective of being a car enthusiast and a driving enthusiast. Um, but Porsche are thinking about evolving the 911 a little bit from generation to generation, um, wanting to sort of shave every little bit of weight off the car, wanting to add every tiny little bit of pace to the car and to bring down the, 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 uh, the zero to 60 speed, the, the PDK is the way to get there. And, and that's what they did. They, they made it only available in PDK and it caused a massive, massive uproar. Um, so pretty quickly they reintroduced the manual and the manual was uh, reintroduced with the second generation GT3 RS. And again, I picked this image um, because the green, the I think this one's the lizard green car and this model, that's what sticks out in my mind whenever I think about it. You could get them in purple, you could get them, you know, all of the colors you can get from Porsche um, and the handful of special colors they do. Uh, you know, with each generation, but that lizard green color was so striking. And, and to me, that will always be the, the 991.2 GT3 RS color. Um, but that one was available in manual, um, still four liters, like the first generation, um, an extra little boost of power, 513 horses or 515 horses. Um, over the, what was just short of 500 in the first generation. Uh, and they managed to shave off um, a tenth of a second. So we're now down to 3.2 second PDK. And these are the GT3 RSs that are available 19 or sorry, uh, 2020, 2021 timeframe. So, you know what, within 10 years, they've evolved, um, the, the car, they've evolved the power. They've taken it from 445 up to over 500. You've now got a full laser engine. Um, and you're now down to 3.2 seconds, you're sub four seconds on the zero to 60. Um, now, before we start talking about the new one, you know, how much do these things cost? This is not the car for the every man, this or every woman. This is the car for those lucky enough to be in Porsche's good books. Because <laughs> if they're planning to make 1500, you can pretty much guarantee that those 1500 allocations went before they even put pen to paper on these things. Um, and so those lucky SOBs that are gonna be driving away in the, the 992 GT3 RSs, whether they keep them or not, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, you and I, we can go online and we're gonna configure a car in a minute, but we, we can't buy one of these. We, we, can't, we, can't, we can't buy these unless you happen to have probably about a million dollars that you're willing to use to overpay for a car from somebody who is just getting the allocation for the sake of it and wanting to flip the car and make money, which happened a lot with the, the 991.1 R11R. Um, you know, they, they were, well, I think the list price was 250,000 and pretty quickly they were being sold for half a million dollars within months of, of release. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, but for the every person, the 991.2 GT3 RS, was $184,000, I think, before you started putting options into it. So it's it's one of the more expensive 911s, of course. Um, they don't make as many of them. They're exclusive. They've got as much power as you could possibly get into a 911, blah, blah, blah. So they are gonna be expensive. In comparison with a Turbo S, which I think starts at around 175, or at least it did, um, for the 991.2 before you start putting options in. You know, it's right up there. You've got the Turbo S, you've got the GT3 RS, you've got the GT2 RS, and then you sort of have everything else below it. Uh, you know, occasionally you've got the models like the T and the R, which come out once in a blue moon. 
and a sports classic, which I actually want to do a video on for the new 992 sports classic. Um, but you're looking at about $185,000. Now, the new, the new 911 GT3 RS, how much is it? It starts, it starts at 200 or more thousand dollars. In fact, let's take a look. We're going to take a look. 200 and $23,000. And that's before you put any options into it. That's before you start thinking, hey, I want a fancy color. Or you know what? I might want to go for the magnesium wheels. Or you know what? I've got to lace this thing in carbon fiber and make it really fast. Because <laughs> we know the carbon fiber gives you all of that extra horsepower, of course. Um, but this one starts almost 50 grand higher than the previous generation. What's that about? That is bonkers. That's bonkers, especially considering um, that the difference isn't huge, actually, between the 991.2 and the 992.1 GT3 RS. It's essentially the same engine. It has a different camshaft. They've made a bunch of changes to the ergonomics or the, um, sorry, the aerodynamics, which we'll, we'll walk through together to bring down that speed to 3.0. So with the PDK, um, you can go 0 to 60, 3.0. You, you're getting 518 horses above 513. So you're getting an extra five horses. You could argue you're not getting much more for your money with a $50,000 uplift apart from getting a ridiculous looking 911, which you either absolutely love or you absolutely hate, it seems, depending on which side of the fence you're on, um, with a track, a top track speed of 184 miles an hour, which isn't as fast as the, the, uh, the GT4 RS, which, although it has a slower zero to 60 speed, it has a faster top track speed, if you can believe it. The 911 has, bowed down and succumbed to the Cayman um, on this one attribute. Well, again, we're going to compare that as well. But $223,000, that's pretty incredible. But we're going to have some fun today. We're going to do some configuring. Um, we're going to check some colors. We're going to check some styles. If, uh, if Nick Murray's joined us, I promised him a good time because uh, Nick and I get on really well, and I think he's an awesome guy. Um, and we both love the brand, but we both seem to like the complete opposite things to each other. I like carbon fiber. He hates it. <laughs> I like the ducktails. Mm, I don't think he's particularly bothered about them. I think the GT3 RS looks absolutely baller, and he thinks it looks god ugly. Anyway. All right, before we go any further, let's see who we've got in. We've got Trond um, from Norway. Hello. We've got Drew. Uh, we've got my good friend, Michael Wooten, Michael's Motors and Meats. If you want to watch Porsche content, especially 996 content, and you're also interested in steaks and barbecue, Michael's the man to know. Um, we've got Alfredo. Hello. Oh, we've got Johnny. Hello. Um, we've got Ron. Uh, we've got my dear friend, Katie Cole. I'm going to give Catherine Cole a big shout out. Uh, one of my best friends. Absolutely awesome. Wonderful mum. Wonderful friend. And she has a YouTube channel called Catherine Cole Tips and Tricks. And uh, there's nothing on there to do with cars, apart from she occasionally wears auto amateur t-shirts because I force her to. <laughs> um, but she's an absolute angel and you should be checking her out and subscribing and tell your girlfriends and your partners and your kids, Catherine Cole Tips and Tools. She's awesome. Um, Alberto, ah, Alberto's in. Hello, mate. I'll be seeing you hopefully in a few weeks. Tale of the Dragon. Uh, America, the Wombat Credenza. It's one of the best handles I've, I've come across. Um, Rustar. Hey, we got a good, we got a good crowd in. That's awesome. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Awesome. Let's get on with it. So, here we are, the GT3 RS. Let's take a little bit of a look at it together. Seeing the way it's, um, you know, driving around with a laptop in it, 
looks a bit silly, I guess, but um, here's the thing. And, and this sort of goes back to the point about, um, you know, Nick uh, Murray not being a big fan of um, what this puppy looks like. This isn't a 911 that, like I say, an every person would buy. But even somebody with boatloads of cash probably wouldn't want to only own a GT3 RS. I think the, the expression sort of go big or go home is completely warranted in this particular context. You want a cool sports car, of course, you go and buy yourself a Carrera or a GTS. You might even pop for a GT3. Good daily drivers, arguably all of them, great on the road, very luxurious and comfortable, but this isn't designed for that purpose. This is designed for the track. This is designed for the people that want to go around and around and around, trying to get every single little ounce of power out of the car, shaving every tenth of a second off their lap time. And when you've got stakes that are that high, this is the car you want. This is the car that's almost over-engineered for the track. They focus in on the aerodynamics. Who cares that the wing is massive when you're able to shave time off your zero to 60 and off you know the, the, the Nuremberg lap times or any lap times? Who cares? You don't care. That's why you know a lot of race cars covered in sponsor stickers. Those sponsor stickers um, are bringing in money, helping that team put that car on the road for the purpose of driving that car on the track. And that's what, that, that, that's what it's there for. That wing has got a function. It's giving twice as much downforce as ever before. The new aerodynamics on the front, which, you know, do they look particularly appealing? Probably not, but they are designed for a purpose and that purpose isn't street use, that is track use. And so somebody with that much passion and that much enthusiasm, they're gonna spend money like that probably on their track car, not their daily driver. So I would expect the people that get super excited about the GT3 RSs appreciate that point and know that, yeah, I'd love to have that for a while. It probably wouldn't be the best daily driver. If somebody gave me one, absolutely. Do I have 300 grand or 250 grand to buy one? Never. <laughs> um, but I'm going to enjoy my daily driver as my 996 or whatever 911 I get in the future. But I can appreciate this for what it is. And that is a track weapon. It really is a track weapon. And oh, just all power to Porsche because they still maintain the silhouette. You've still got all of the features that make it quintessentially 911. But it's the track version with that big wing on the back. So I'm all, I'm all for it. I'm absolutely all for it. Um, I just, I, I can't get enough of how big that wing is on the back. I mean, it's, it's massive, absolutely massive. Now, let's talk about some of, the, uh, some of the big questions that have been out there. Is this better than the, the GT4 RS? That's a great question. Um, let's take a look. Is it better or faster than the Turbo S? That is another great question. We're gonna answer that question today. Let's take a look. All right, so I've got a comparison here of, uh, and I'm gonna move this around, hang on. Do, do, do. Um, so I've got a comparison of the new GT3 RS against the GT3 and against the 911 Turbo. For some reason, the Turbo S wasn't available on the configurator to take a look at. Um, but let's take a look. Price-wise, um, the, the, uh, the GT3 RS starts at 223,000. The 911 GT3 starts at 169, and the 911 Turbo starts at 182. Now, if you consider the fact that the Turbo is faster and more powerful than the GT3 RS, and you're still paying 50 grand more, um, or 45 grand more, or what have you, um, for the GT3 RS, that's commitment. That's real commitment to the brand and to that particular model of wanting an RS. Because if you want speed, if you want a luxurious sports car, clearly to me, the Turbo S is the one to buy. I mean, to be fair, saving yourself 55 grand and going for the GT3 and having 3.7 seconds zero to 60, 
with over 500 horses, which you can probably tune and probably push up to about 520 or 30 and maybe bring that 3.7 down to 3.5, that is worth avoiding another knock for 55 grand in my case. But who am I to argue with uh, people that can afford to spend hundreds of thousands on a track car? Um, but so there's the price differences. Max power, the GT3 RS, um, 518, just five horses more than the previous generation. The GT3, um, just over 500, which is about, I want to say 15 more than the previous generation GT3. And the turbo, I mean, look at that. It's a monster. 572 horses, which you can tune and easily Okay, I'm not going to say easily, don't quote me, but I, I believe you can get to over 700 horses relatively easily with something like a cop tune and the right exhaust on the back, <clears throat> sole performance. Um, I think, you know, you could easily do that. So you could get yourself a 700 horsepower turbo for 182 grand and let's just say five or six grand for the exhaust and the tune, still under 190 grand, which is still saving you 30 odd thousand dollars, and you've got a car that's sub three second with over 700 horses, and it, it's got turbo written on the back. I think I'm talking myself into buying a turbo. Let's look at the top track speed. The turbo has got 199 miles per hour, as the GT3. The GT3 RS 184. I, I don't know why that is. Um, is anybody here gonna, I'm just gonna check the comments. Um, I, I don't know why that is. Can that be right? No, I don't know. But maybe it has something to do with the weight and critical mass and gaining a certain momentum at a certain speed. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, of course, the sizes are all basically the same within a fraction of an inch together. Um, but there we go. So, you know, is it, the most cost-effective Porsche? No. Um, are you getting the biggest bang for your buck? No. Um, but if you want that something really special that not a lot of people have, because they're only going to be making about 1,500 of them, the GC3 RS is obviously one to go. Now, the other question I've been getting a lot, um, and I'm going to be talking with my uh, good friend, Mr. Andy Gaunt, on Last Rasp on our Curb and Canyon podcast, uh, is what about the GT3 RS versus the GT4 RS? Um, when the GT4 RS came out, I think even, even 911 diehards like myself, um, I'll only ever own 911s. Okay, I'm never going to fit in a Cayman or a Boxster, so I'm never going to buy one. But if I could, if I could fit in a Cayman or a Boxster, I would still stick with the 911. But I think I was one of thousands of 911 enthusiasts that sort of celebrated Porsche for bringing out the RS version of the GT4 for the Cayman enthusiasts. You know, it's, it's in many ways just as good as the 911. It still looks absolutely killer. It's fast, it's sleek, it sounds incredible. Um, you get all of the RS trim pieces that you would get on the, the 911 with the, with the, the vents and the, um, the hood vents and the, the, the fender vents and the, the, the wing on the back and carbon fiber beyond your wildest dreams and the special wheels and stiff suspension, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but just look at the price difference. It's almost $100,000 less, okay, about $80,000 less at a starting point than the 911. But look what you get. You get a track weapon that has a faster, a higher track speed. It has a top track speed of 196 miles an hour for $80,000 less than the 911 GT3 RS, which has 184 miles an hour. As a 911 fan, you know, <clears throat> let's move on. <laughs> Max power. If, if we're about measuring things, um, and uh, anyway, let's not go there, but if we're about measuring things, we want to measure horsepower. Um, max power for the GT3 RS is more. You get 518 horses against 493 for the GT4. But again, what I just can't get over is the price difference. There are two tenths of a second between the GT3 and the GT4 RS, but there is $80,000 
ish between those two cars. That's just incredible. Why, why would you buy a GT3 RS if you can fit in a GT4 RS? That's where my head's at. And, and that's coming from somebody who is a diehard 911 fan. Um, and one that's got a top track speed. Now, uh, I don't have the statistics off the top of my head. The 911 GT3 RS is still faster on the ring than the GT4 RS, marginally. And it wouldn't surprise me if Porsche have fudged those numbers. <laughs> because if the 911 is no longer their flagship car, they've got a really tricky situation on their hands. But they're basically at that point where the Cayman is every bit just as good as the 911. And uh, arguably, you get a lot more bang for your buck with a Cayman GT4 or a Cayman GT4 RS. So they're treading a very fine line there between uh, catering for all of the different enthusiasts out there and sinking their flagship car, I think, you know. Um, so I don't know. But I, I think there's a lot of people that would spend the money on a GT4 RS over a GT3, probably because they can't get an allocation for a GT4 RS, but uh, sorry, for a GT3 RS. But I, I think that difference is, 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 is pretty remarkable. Um, now, the design of the GT3 RS, let's take a look at the new one. Um, everybody's talking about the wing. It's got the swan neck like the GT3 has. Um, the wing um, actually sort of comes apart at, at track speeds. Um, better aerodynamics, better, downs for, uh, better downforce. Um, it, it's massive, but again, go big or go home with this type of car. If you can see, it still has the ducktail. 50 years later, you can see, though, just below the big gaudy wing, there is the ducktail. I, I think that's absolutely amazing. On the front, um, apparently this is where they've spent the majority of their R&D money for this uh, generation, which is the aerodynamics. Um, they've now moved away from uh, three separate radiators on the front to a single radiator, uh, which essentially spans across the front. Um, which means they've been able to do away with some of the hardware. They've been able to essentially just provide a big open mesh grill at the front for um, better cooling, better um, uh, friction reduction, and all that sort of stuff. They've also increased the sides of, uh, sorry, the size of the uh, the vents, the nostrils, if you will, in the hood. Um, I'm not sure what that does for aerodynamics, but apparently it helps keep the uh, the wheels and the brakes cool and, and keeps the front of the car stable. I don't really understand that one, but um, sure, I'll have a car with big nostrils on the front. Um, we take a look at the side, um, the wheels, those really gorgeous big, I think they're 21 inch wheels, we'll, we'll find out when we get onto the configurator. Um, I just love how that ducktail has been maintained there on the back underneath the massive race car wing. Um, I think it was Jerry Seinfeld who bought a 991.2 GT3 RS and he asked Porsche to deliver it him uh, with the wing separated. So he has the wing, or at least he, he sold it recently, but uh, the car, but he had the wing basically hung up in his garage and he had a GT3 RS track spec without the tail on the back and just the ducktail. And I, th I think it was in... Uh, it's either Mexico blue or one of those blues. Um, looked phenomenal, uh, but I, I kind of like that. And maybe if someone was kind enough to buy me a GT3 RS, I'd take the wing off and just leave the ducktail on the back. Um, but there we go. Pretty pretty cool profile. Uh, what's really striking with the GT3 RS is uh, are the colors of the wheels. You know, we go back to the 996 and take a look at that when it was first um, released. Uh, what did it have? It had um, red wheels on the side, right? Gorgeous red wheels. Um, where let's 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 get rid of this one. Do, do, do. Um, and again, here we are with red wheels. With the 997.1, you were able to get your orange wheels to go with the orange color. You could also get green wheels to go with the lime green. I think it was lime green at the time that was uh, offered. Um, there were actually quite a few black GT3 RSs with orange wings and orange decals down the side with orange rims, which actually, it's not as bad as it sounds, actually look really good. And here, um, for the, the press release, um, or the, the, the release color, um, they have put out the red rims. 
Um, and the white and the red actually um, hails back again to one of the um, original releases of the 2.7 Carrera RS back from 1972, uh, which was offered in the red on white, and it was offered with the green on white. And so that's what we have there. Um, inside, you know, it just, it is what it is. It's a 911. Um, it looks the way every 911 looks uh, on the inside um, with a few different uh, styling features here and there. You have fabric pulls instead of door handles. Um, I think by default they come with the, the, the bucket seats. We'll take a look in a minute. Um, and, uh, you know, they're like body molded special bucket seats, um, which lighter because they're made of carbon fiber and you know all that good stuff but it, it's basically the interior of the 911 that we all know and love if we take a look at the uh if we take a look at the green release oh, these photos just absolutely blow me away now this is where the aerodynamics come in again um and and i think these are where people are either loving or hating this particular model um look at the huge um intake uh, or vents sorry on the top of the fenders there and then the fins on the front of the wheel and the back of the front wheel um, which are for stability but also for uh, cooling um, the, the the vents in the side at the back in the fenders are basically the same but yeah all of the changes are in the front there you've got that huge um, vent in the front with that single radiator um, you've got the new style bumper. You've got those fins on the front. There are also, if you can just see um, on the top of the screen there, there are, there are actually fins on the top of the car as well. Basically, this thing is turning into a shark. Uh, let's take a look at the rear end. Oh, baby. So we've got fins again there on the back end of the car. Um, we've got the, I always forget what this is called. Um, whatever the under thing is uh, by the... Um, by the, by the exhaust pipes there on the back. What was that thing called? I even bought one for my 991. Anyway, never mind. Whatever that is. Um, and we got the ducktail. But yeah, the, you can see the fins there on the back. And you can also see the fins better in this picture on the top of the roof. Um, all for aerodynamics. Um, I, think, I think personally, I prefer, of the two color options that we've seen so far, um, I think I prefer the green on the white. Even though red is usually my, my color, um, uh, it looks like Jeremy there uh, agrees with me. <laughs> um, oh man, look at that. Absolutely tremendous. Um, we take a look at the front. Oh, that gives you a much better view of the, um, of the radiator situation there going on in the front uh, and also the nostrils. But just, uh, okay, so the wheels there, you're seeing the front, the front wheels and the rear wheels. Um, so it looks like the, the wheels are ridiculously wide, but the wheels are still pretty wide. Um, can you imagine seeing that in your rear view mirror on the racetrack? Oh my goodness. I would just be so excited and terrified at the same time. Um, this photo next though, really gives you the best view of the, uh, of the rear, of the rear tail. I mean, uh, of the, of the fin, the, oh my God, I just can't talk of the, uh, the wing on the back. Um, you can see the Porsche lettering. Um, it just screams track weapon. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. But disastrous for many people as well. Uh, another view of the wing there on the side. A little bit of a close-up there. You can see more of the, um, the aerodynamic um, uh, flaring on the fenders and the, uh, the vents on the top. Um, seeing those two cars side by side here, though, this, this is just absolutely fantastic. This... This is one of the things, and one of my favorite things about Porsche is, uh, okay, let's, with one caveat, besides the movement from air-cooled to water-cooled, which arguably was, to some degree, throwing the baby out with the bathwater um, for some people, they've never done that, generation to generation. You put all of them side by side, and the dot releases as you go through the major releases just show um, that Porsche are continuing to dedicate themselves to their original design. And with every release, there's a little bit of an improvement and a little bit of evolution. 
and a little bit of improvement and a little bit of ev evolution. And then every now and again, there's like a huge generational leap forward when they make a breakthrough. So the, the RS-27 there from 1972, you know, flash forward another seven to 10 years, what happened? They released the 930 Turbo and all of a sudden Porsche is putting out um, turbocharged engines and people are going nuts for them. And then flash forward, you know, another 20 years or so and they've, they've squeezed every last drop of power and every last bit of performance out of the air-cooled engine and they make a decision to basically take a 90 degree or even 180 degree turn from at the time what was 25 30 years worth of engineering experience and go into a water-cooled car and and every generation beyond that now has been water-cooled um and i think looking back at porsche's history over the last 50 years or so um that milestone is probably one of the biggest in um in history of, of Porsche, that or the fried egg headlights. I'm not sure which one was more controversial, the, the, the design of the headlights or the actual engineering technology underneath the shell. Um, but just looking at these two cars, yes, they're very different from each other, but they're also really similar to each other. And, and that's what I love about Porsche. The headlights, the bumpers, the wheels, the, the silhouette, the ducktail, um, even the shape of the windscreen. And even the lines on the hood going towards, arguably the lights are a little bit flatter now and set back, but it's it's evolution and, and revolution. It's not, you know, just throwing away um, a design and coming up with something crazy just for the sake of selling cars. They iterate and the, they grow and evolve these cars to make them better. Yeah, it's just what absolutely phenomenal production and manufacturing, good job. German Porsche people. Um, let's see if we've got another side-by-side -side view. This this as well, just tremendous. Look at that. Oh, I could stare at these all day. Now, if you are lucky enough to be going to um, Luft, uh, Luft 8 on October 9th, <coughs> my birthday, by the way. Um, October 9th this year, Luft um, in the port of LA, they're back in LA, having been to Indianapolis last year, you're going to see a whole load of different renditions and, and restorations of the Carrera RS model. Um, I believe this white with the green is going to be there. This, this actual one from this photo shoot is going to be there at Luft, from what I gather. Um, from what I saw last year, there were, I don't know, maybe five, maybe even as many as 10 different examples of the RS. Um, every single one of them very different from the other and all of them just completely gorgeous. Um, I'm very jealous of anybody who's, uh, who's going to Luft this year. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but look at that, 50 years of evolution, 50 years of, of growth and passion and genius um, from one car to the other. Both of them completely beautiful and ugly in their own very unique, special ways, but I guess that's what we love about them, right? Just absolutely incredible. Um, all right, well, let's, does anybody fancy configuring a car? Should we configure the, the dream car, if you will? See how we go? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So, we got the car configurator somewhere. Um, let's get my ugly mug just uh, off to the side. Don't want to disappear completely. Here we go. Oh baby! Now I should probably just give this a quick refresh um, because the, 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 the web page has been sat here for a little while. Um, but we are going to see this price. In fact, I need to get my face out of the way because uh, I do want to take a look at the um, I do want to take a look at the uh, at the price as it goes up as we go. So let's really shrink my bow race down and just get out of the way. Um, here we go. We're in. So <clears throat> let's take out the landscape and let's just look at the car for now. There it is. Now I'm going to start off by saying. I am disappointed 
in the colors that are available for this release of the RS, especially considering that it's 50 years, it's 50 year anniversary edition, essentially, um, even though the, R the GT3 RS has only been out um, since the, the 996 in 2004, I think it was released. Um, but you'd think that they would give you, even though you can do paint to sample, I would have thought that you'd have some more color options. So we've got black. Of course, Porsche 911s look great in black. They're an absolute bugger to clean. Guards red, amazing. And look at that with the black accents and the wheels. Damn, that looks good. Um, if you want the taxi cab version, then get it in yellow, Banana Man. I, I actually think that looks amazing as well. I take all of that back. I think the yellow looks really good. Um, but the special blues, shark blue, come on. You gave us the shark blue with the GT3, Mr. Porsche, and we thought it was good. Is it massively different from the blues that have been out in the last few years? Not really. Um, couldn't you have given us Barley Blue or Oslo Blue um, or any number of blues from the last 50 years which are different enough from the rest of the model range than Shark Blue? At the same time, though, I guess, if you're willing to spend $225,000 on a car, you're probably not going to be too fussed about dropping 10 grand or more to get the paint to sample. Oh no, 18 grand, I'm sorry. <laughs> $18,000 to do the paint to sample. But we got the shark blue, we've got the arctic gray, we've got the GT silver metallic, we've got the python, um, I sound like such an American, the python green, and uh, we've got the ice gray metallic. I mean, come on, you're giving us three versions of gray. And don't get me wrong, I've had two gray 911s. I had a seal gray and an agate gray one. But three different shades of gray and only two kind of fancy colors. I'm just disappointed. I am I'm disappointed. But for the sake of this build, what should we go for? Special color, blue, go red. Um, I'm going to go with what Drew said. We're going to go red. God's red, baby. All right, so there's the exterior color. Now, the wheel options are pretty cool. Um, I think the, the, the GT3 and the GT3 RS wheels in all of the previous generations have been a bit suspect. I think they got it right with the, uh, the 991 generation, but I, still, the, 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 just the basic GT3, the basic GT3, just the GT3, not the GT3 RS, those GT3 wheels with the sort of loops, um, I've never really been a big fan. I think they've killed the wheels for this. They've finally got it right. Um, these uh, forged aluminum wheels, 20 in the front, 21 in the back, um, absolutely fantastic. I think they look amazing. Now, for an extra three grand, you can get the same wheel, but lightweight. And so same in that it's the same style, pretty much. Um, I think obviously it looks like a slightly different color or it is a different color, uh, but they're lighter weight. So you're spending another three grand to take off a little bit of weight. Sure, good idea. Um, I think the other option is magnesium, um, in which case you've got to choose some, some other options. And let's just say for the sake of argument, we are going to get the, uh, the Weissart passage and, uh, uh, package and so on. You can get the magnesium wheels. I think they actually look pretty sweet there. Um, but I'm going to just stick with the forged aluminum. I, I think they look great with the red and the black. So a bit boring on the wheels. Um, there are other things of, uh, you can do with the wheel colors, of course. You can get them painted in satin black, in silver. Um, let's see what they look like in pyro red. $600. Again, if I'm spending all this money on a car, it's not the end of the world. But that red doesn't go with guards red. So no, I'm not doing that. Um, let's take a look at indigo blue. No. <laughs> no, I'm just not going to do that. But you know what? Let's go back. If we had a white car with blue wheels, no. If we had a blue car with blue, no. Gray? Maybe. Maybe. No. Let's go back to red. 
Let's also go back to... Well, let's try Satin Black, actually. Oh, yes. Okay, that's what we're doing. Hey, by the way, uh, anybody that watches Curb and Canyon and listens to Andy uh, joke with me about the big gulp, quote-unquote, that I drink when I'm doing podcasts with him, this is said big gulp. And today, it's not Starbucks, even though it's a cup from Starbucks. It's Diet Dr. Pepper. That hit the spot. Name that movie. If you can name that movie in the comments, you get a FD Motorsports baseball cap on me. <clears throat> All right. Um, black satin wheels. No one's come up with it yet. I really want to see somebody come up with that, that quote. Um, all right, so interior. Let's take a quick look around the outside. Oh, look at that. God, that is killer. I mean, if you don't like the wing, tough. But look how good that car looks with the red and the black and the wheels and the wing and the lights and the rear bumper that's just grabbable and the black on the fenders there at the front and the stripes on the top, on the hood, the fins. Oh, I'm getting really excited. That looks so good. All right, yeah, it's not the car you're gonna roll up to your in-laws in or drop your kids off at school, um, but damn. Jules, you win the baseball cap. Send me an email, contact at autoamateur.com and you'll get the FD Motorsports baseball cap. It was in fact Pulp Fiction, Samuel L. Jackson, Opposite, Frank Wally, drinking his Sprite, I think it was, from Big Kahuna Burger, and went. <sighs> that hit the spot. All right, so interior, let's take a look. Uh, we're going to have to get rid of that yellow notch on the top of the steering wheel. I'm not having a red car with a yellow notch, but let's just go with it for now. The interior, um, this is where the GT3 RS is basic in some ways because they're not giving you all of the luxurious options that you get with a regular 911. Um, you're just getting essentially leather with race tech, um, leather with race tech, leather with race tech. We are going to be able to add leather um, a little bit later on and depending on which packages we go for, you've got to go with, with one or the other. <clears throat> but for the sake of argument, I'm, I'm just going to stick with the, with the gray or oh, the silver on the black. Because I think if I went full red with a red exterior, well, actually, that's not the end of the world, is it? What was this one? Let's take a look at this one. This one, I think, it looks like red is thrown up everywhere. Oh, no. Oh, okay, they've gone a bit, they've gone a bit low key, actually, with, uh, with this version. But still, I think, and those reds don't go together very well, in, in my opinion. I think we're just going to go for silver. We're gonna go for silver on black for now and see if we can add any uh, any additional elements there. Um, now, these full bucket seats, good God, I've never liked them. They're not comfortable. Apparently they're okay once you're in and you've done like quite a few miles on them. A big guy like me, getting into them is hilarious. Sitting on them and driving for more than about five minutes gives you bruises on the size, side of your hips. Yeah. I drove my friend AJ's for about an hour and I had two bruises on the side of my bum for a good couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm, people are probably going to lose their pants over this, um, but I'm going to take out the bucket seats and I'm going to put in the adaptive 18 way, super comfortable, awesome um, sports seats. Sorry guys. So where are we now? 228,000. Oh, we're not spending enough. Come on. We've got loads more stuff to add to this. So here we go. We've got black on red. Packages. Um, why start passage? What comes... Sorry, package, not passage. Uh, what do we get? We got a lot for $30,000 and weight saving. $33,000 and you're saving 33 pounds. That's pretty incredible. For every pound you're taking out, you're putting $1,000 in. Or the other way around. For every thousand dollars more you put into the car, you're saving a pound. I could just go on the Atkins diet for maybe a month and lose 33 pounds and save myself $33,000. But um, 
look at this exterior we got the front trunk lid the front lid in carbon fiber Ooh. the roof in carbon fiber the exterior mirrors in carbon fiber the moving portion of the wing in part carbon fiber the window triangles in car i'm getting it that's what we're getting it door grab handles the grab handles are in carbon fiber the pd shift paddles are in magnesium Ugh. why not carbon fiber um gear shifter logo see we're going uh anti-roll bars i couldn't really care less about those um but but how yeah for all of that carbon fiber sign me up uh and so this is where we got to choose a slightly different interior but i'm still going for silver over the race tech and here we go <laughs> look at that <sighs> let's let's just zoom in carbon fiber hood with the nostrils carbon fiber roof carbon fiber wing carbon fiber intakes carbon fiber vents carbon fiber mirrors <sighs> I hope that rear bumper is carbon fiber, but I don't think it is. It should be though. Let's face it. If you're spending 33 grand, you deserve that kind of carbon fiber. Um, oh, that looks killer. Absolutely killer. I actually think maybe I'd take the wing off that. Do a Jerry Seinfeld. No, let's keep it on. Oh, that's incredible. Look at all that carbon fiber. You can't really see too much of it on the interior, but look there, the handle is carbon fiber. The door pulls, oh, I suppose they're, they're pulls, aren't they? They're, they're, they're carbon fiber. Um, yeah, all right, money well spent. $33,000 worth of money well spent. All right, seats, we've already done that. 3D printed body form bucket seats, give me a break. They look like child seats and they are uncomfortable AF. No interest, absolutely no interest. But you can get them in soft, medium, or hard. I'm gonna get them in nope. All right, exterior, let's take a look. Now, there are options here. If you didn't wanna go for the YSART package, you could choose some of these individual pieces of carbon fiber um, one by one. So, um, as an example here, the window triangles, uh, which are part of the package I've just selected, you can choose for a mere $500. Um, for, there are other things here. Let's, well, actually, while we're talking about carbon fiber, let's go down. There's actually an entire section on carbon fiber. Um, you can get yourself the, the door um, illuminated sills. You can get other stuff. Um, and as we go through, you'll see that there, there are a handful of other things that you can get in carbon fiber if you didn't want to spend $33,000 on the, the big baller package, but that's what we're doing today. Um, so we've done packages, we've done seats. Okay, let's keep going down the exterior. Um, window triangle trims, we've got that already. Under door puddle lights, God, no, 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 no. I, I just, no. I'm not gonna start saying what I think about them. I'm just gonna say no, no. Deletion of GT3 RS logo on side doors. Uh, no, I'm gonna leave those on. I want everybody to know that I'm a complete moron that spent $300,000 on a car instead of a house. Um, bespoke decal set. Now this is actually pretty cool. Um, it's not going to bring this up on the configurator uh, in the in the even though it well it will it won't we'll talk about that in a second but um, you want to put your racing numbers on the side of the car whatever numbers you want it has to be three digits you can um, and uh, I think they look pretty fly I mean look at that nine eleven on the side um, somebody's got like a one I I think last night when I configured this I put nine nine two on the side um, and thought it looked pretty basic but like having nine eleven on the side that, that's pretty cool. Um, but again, if you are, if you are track oriented, if you're on the track all the time and you have a race number, which a lot of track guys do, you can actually get this from the factory with your number on the side. I mean, how Ricky Bobby is that? Um, deletion of the model on the rear. Uh, no, I want everyone to know that I'm driving a GT3 RS. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's see what, what would that look like without it? Yeah, no, we're going to keep that on the back. In fact, is there an option to make it bigger? 
no accent packages logos um, so these come with the these come with the car already I think so you get GZ3 RS on the side I think it's already there isn't it yeah it's already there I, I don't understand that one uh, exterior mirror upper trims and carbon fiber we've got those already um, as part of the Weissart package if you wanted to get it by yourself here you're gonna spend just over sixteen hundred dollars on them totally worth it uh, all right let's take a look at performance surprise surprise so we've got PDK wait wait a minute wait wait a minute I didn't realize this I didn't realize that this was a PDK only release maybe it's maybe it's just the first release I, I'm, I didn't I didn't get this in the research that I did and I didn't get this from the press release either um, so it looks like we're gonna have to go PDK uh, Porsche really I oh all right then we're gonna go PDK um, front axle lift system I don't think I would ever use it but let's get it anyway because you know we're building our lottery win spec um, and if I need to go up and down a curb you know on my way to Tesco's or Target then sure um, I'm gonna need it extended range fuel tank sure um, you're adding weight but you're doing less pit stops maybe I don't know I, I don't really track so I, I wouldn't know um, th this is something I'm I'm just not gonna buy ever and that's the um, the carbon ceramic brakes. I mean, I love the idea of them. You get the bigger caliper, they're yellow, they're special. I get it. They last for like, you know, 50, 60,000 miles or something crazy. Um, but when you want to replace them, you've got to spend another 10 grand to replace them. Uh, you, 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 just, no. Um, that's, yeah, I, I'd rather set that money on fire, to be honest. We're not, we're not going to do that. Um, but now they've started doing not just yellow, you can also get the, the carbon um, brakes in uh, black. And I, I thought you could also get them in red as well, but, but maybe not. What I, I think what I might do though is get the brake calipers in high gloss black. I do like the red brakes. Um, we got black wheels. No. All right, we're going to stay with the red calipers. All right, let's do that. Now, lights and vision. Um, this is where you start, you know, really scraping the bottom of the barrel for things to spend your money on. Um, those lights look pretty great as they are already. Um, we can get them black um, with the Porsche Dynamic Light System so that they detect when lights are coming at you and they, they move and they go up and they go down. When you're on a track, I suppose, if someone's driving at you, you are in trouble. You're in big trouble if someone's driving at you. So probably not something to get for the track. But, you know, again, just to um, throw a bit more money into this build, let's do that. They look black. They look mean. Um, I like that. Um, we can also get the PDLS Plus. Um, and there is some other fancy gizmo gadget with that as well. Um, it's the Matrix style. Um, we have um, LED, full LED, I think, instead of the LED and halogen combo, um, which the, uh, I don't know, but well, there's a huge difference in price. Good Lord. Um, let's, well, let's go for it. Yeah, that looks great. Now on the back executive, oh, sorry, exclusive design taillights. I think this is just the clear taillights across the back. Um, and considering we've got a lot of red on the car already, I am going to go for that. Um, but it essentially just takes the, uh, the Cylon, um, you know, eye bar there at the top and, uh, turns it clear. Um, I think, I think that looks good. Yeah. Let's go for that. Yeah, that looks really good. Uh, and then auto dimming mirrors with integrated rain sensor. I mean, okay. Who cares? But you know, again, we've won the lottery. Uh, we want to get a car that's completely decked out. So let's go for it. Where are we at? $273,000. All right. That's, that's quite a lot of money. Uh, awesome. Uh, all right. What else do we need to do? Comfort and assistance systems. Um, uh, rear parking assist. So yeah. All right. If I'm going to buy this for the track, do I really care about parking sensors? Probably not. But having tried to reverse just a regular GT3 with that wing in the rear view mirror, it's a pretty scary proposition. 
actually. So um, I think I would probably go for the park assist. Um, traffic sign recognition, no. Um, preparation for the Porsche dash cam, front and back for what is only $130. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And that actually is ridiculously good value. Um, I mean, you don't get the, the, the dash cams, but the fact that the um, the frame is there and the wiring's all there just for you to pop whatever dash cam technology you want in there. Yeah, that's great. Let's do that. Um, interior, ambient lighting. I'm, I'm a big fan of ambient lighting. I think it makes the interior look really nice. And, um, you know, for... The sake of being able to see where your keys are falling on the floor and you're driving around at night um, having too much fun yes let's do that steering wheel and gear lever in black leather i do like a bit of leather yes and, and actually if that gets rid of the yellow notch on the top of the uh, steering wheel that would be great I, i'd be happy with a red notch on the steering wheel but um yellow on the oh yeah that looks better and that you know i need at least one project here to mod when i don't buy this car. <laughs> so that could be something that I do. Uh, luggage net in the passenger footwell. Hey, it's free. I will take that. Thank you very much. Uh, interior trim inlays in the color. Oh, I wonder what this is going to look like. Do I want red trim? Mm, no. No, no, not going for that. Vehicle keys painted in. Yes, of course. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. Yes, please. Um, black on black, lanyard, decorative stitching. We've got to go for deviated stitching, you guys. Come on. Um, <laughs> um, just checking some of the comments there. Oh, that's quite funny. Uh, all right. Um, in fact, let me see if I can get up on the screen. Uh, where are we? Da -da 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 -da. Comments. Johnny, that's funny. Um, you just said, please, no. <laughs> All right, uh, smoking package, no. Seat belts, all right, yeah, so seat belts, um, I want them in guards red. I think that is, I'm a really big fan of DVA's uh, stitching, as, as you know, if you follow my channel. Um, I'm also a big fan of the DVA seat, seat belts, especially with the black interior. I think that looks great. Um, so we've got the red seat belts, that's annoying. Um, let's go back to the interior. Um, Seatbelts in red, I'm all about that. Okay, now, a bit more fun. Um, I want the tack, the center of the tack in guards red, just to go with the um, with the exterior of the car. I think we can probably also get the, the sports chrono stopwatch in guards red. Yes, we can. Um, let's go back and see that again. I think that looks great. That looks really great especially just set against the backdrop of the black. If I could get the GT3 RS little logo there below the gear shifter in red and the top of the gear shifter in red as well, that would be nice to tie it all in, but, you know, not the end of the world. Um, door pull loops in black uh, as opposed to what is now silver. No, I don't like that. Let's get rid of that. Fire extinguisher, sure, $180.00. Could save your car, why not? Uh, now, from here, we can start, you know, really gold plating or at least leather plating. Um, where are we? We can start adding leather everywhere. Um, steering column case in leather. I had that in my 991. I quite like that. Um, air vents surround in leather. Nope. Air vents surround. I mean, you really need leather around those parts of your dashboard. Yep. <laughs> Deviated stitching. You want to add? Oh, no, I don't want to paint it. Um, sports seats plus with the backrest shells in leather. Uh, no, 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 no. Owner's manual in leather, no. Um, extended dashboard in leather, yes, definitely. If you've been in a 911 that just has the sort of regular um, dashboard, it just looks like a dashboard. But if you've been inside a 911 that has a full leather interior with that leather dashboard, you know what you're getting into. Oh no, but I've got to take the uh, the, the Weissart package off. Nope, I don't, I don't want to save myself $32,000 for the sake of um, 
just having a leather dashboard. But those leather dashboards, absolutely gorgeous. It wouldn't surprise me actually if the if the Weissart package comes with that extra fancy stuff. Um, Sun visors, race tech. Not a big fan of that material. I know my good friend Nick is, but um, oh, you're right. You're right. Uh, somebody said that oh, the one back credenza said leather fuse box. I, I would have added leather fuse box, but I didn't see that option. Um, floor mats, air vent surrounds, sports seats, vehicle keys, owner's manual, owner's manual. Yeah, I didn't see the um, the fuse cover. Um, all right, what else can we get in carbon fiber? The door sill guards in matte carbon fiber illuminated. These are with the YSOC package, so I don't need to bother about this, but oh, just that looks great. Yes, they look great. Um, and carbon fiber floor mats with, no, I don't need that floor. Carbon fiber floor mats, I'd feel terrible putting my feet on them all the time. Interior aluminum, don't care. Audio communication, um, Bose is basically the only option. They're not going to put a Burmeister in something like this for the track. Um, the, the, the weight, actually, I think, of all of that is a lot heavier than the Bose. Um, but yes, let's go for the old Bose. Um, the deletion of the antenna on the roof. Uh, no, let's. I, I, I don't think that actually looks very big, and I don't really care either way. Um, I think you may have noticed that the the wiper, the rear windscreen wiper, is not an option on this, which would make uh, Nick a bit sad. In fact, here he is! Nick Murray has joined. Nick, welcome. Um, Nick, I'm about to spend $280,000 on a GT3, which will make you throw up. <laughs> Let's just do a quick recap for Mr. Nick Murray. We've got carbon fiber, everywhere. We've got the YSR package, we've got the hood, we've got the roof, we've got the, the trim, we've got the window triangles, we've got the center console, um, we've got the carbon fiber edge to the big wing on the back, we've got the wing mirrors, we've got the, the vents on the front. This, this carbon fiber absolutely, absolutely everywhere. I just love it. Um, and I've gone for red. I, uh, I'm not sure that's quite your color, maybe, Nick. Um, it's not mamba green, um, but it's still colorful. I, I think you should be proud that I haven't, you know, put gray on a $300,000 car. Um, child seats, nope. Transport and, pro uh, transport and protection. Uh, well, you know what? Let's get an indoor car cover just because we can. And... Um, yeah, that'll do. Child seats, no. We've done audio and communications. Care and accessories. Uh, oh, oh, we don't need to bother with any of that crap. If you need fantastic towels, microfiber towels for your car, then go to nickmurrayisamoron.com and he sells them. I think he makes them as well in his back garden. Uh, but yeah, Nick sells microfiber towels and apparently everyone loves these. Now, the um, the chronograph, uh, do I want to spend... Oh, no, wait, it's free? I was going to say, do I want to spend an additional $11,000 on a watch that goes with my car? Um, well, if it's free, yep. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, quantity. Can I have two? <laughs> uh, no, that'll do. All right. So here we go. Let's take a look. Let's see the overview. Base price, $223,000. Uh, options, $55,000. So not only is this GT3 RS about $50,000 more expensive than the last generation before you've even added any options, I've added $50,000 worth of options. So this is now <laughs> way more. This is now $100,000 more than the previous generation of GT3 RS, which I actually like better, I think, than this, and you can get in manual. Um, but, you know, we're having, we're having a lot of fun here with the old 992. Um, what, what astounds me here is the fact that uh, the, the Weissart package is just so expensive. Um, you, you lose 33 pounds of weight for $33,000. That's some kind of an exchange. I'm not sure if the ratio quite works out 
financially for me. Um, but here we are. Yeah, I think that's an absolute beauty. Again, would I have this as a daily driver? Well, yes, I would. But if I was seriously going to buy this, it would not be a daily driver. Um, it is a track weapon. It is for tracking. Uh, this would be my fun car. And my, my Turbo S or my Carrera would be my daily. Um, I'd be that guy with those two beautiful 911s in his garage. Um, and I think it's absolutely awesome. Uh, now, again, a lot of people, including Nick, who's uh, just joined, not a big fan of how this looks. And I think that's totally fine. Fair enough. It's not for everybody. But then this car is not for everybody. I mean, it, it's not for everybody. This is for the people who are committed to racing, that want to spend the money on a car that they can race, that they're going to track, um, or they, you know, they're just wide boys from Manhattan that have got money to throw around and want to drive around being seen. But I imagine that's maybe, you know, 1% of the 1,500 or so that they're going to make of this thing. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, look at that. Uh, just uh, absolutely fantastic. So, you guys... That's pretty much it for uh, today's live. We've uh, talked about the history of the RS. Uh, we've taken a look at the various uh, generations and the, the evolution uh, through the years. And um, now we're done. I hope that you've enjoyed this session. Um, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Uh, and uh, I'll see you in another live one soon. Uh, very quick, um, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to be at Checked It Out Chicago 2022. Uh, my car's actually featured in the um, display thing that they're putting on. Um, so you can see my car if, uh, if you're in the area and you, you want to take a look at what a $5,000 beaten up 996 looks like once you pour $25,000 into it to get it fixed. <laughs> Um, and then towards the end of September, myself, Jay Reed, Alberto, Michael Wooten, and uh, several other lucky chaps are going to the Tail of the Dragon. We're going to the Smoky Mountains again to do some driving. Uh, we've got, I think, about 12 guys in a compound of four cabins, plus a bunch of other people that are going to be meeting us for the drives. That's four days of driving in the mountains. Um, that's really going to put my 996 to the test. I'm looking forward to that. Um, hopefully, I can get some of these videos uh, finished that I've been doing recently. But that's it. Thank you very much for joining. Um, you've been awesome as ever. Thanks for all of the comments. And uh, take care. See you soon, guys. <laughs>